The Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you. And I will lead back your captives from every place. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Maccabees. Judas and his brothers said, Now that our enemies have been crushed, let us go up to purify the sanctuary and rededicate it. So the whole army assembled and went up to Mount Zion. Early in the morning, on the 25th day of the ninth month, that is, the month of Chislev, in the year 148, they arose and offered sacrifice according to the law on the new altar of burnt offerings that they had made. On the anniversary of the day on which Gentiles had defiled it, on that very day it was reconsecrated with songs, harps, flutes, and cymbals. All the people prostrated themselves and adored and praised heaven, who had given them success. For eight days they celebrated the dedication of the altar and joyfully offered burnt offerings and sacrifices of deliverance and praise. They ornamented the facade of the temple with gold crowns and shields. They repaired the gates and the priest's chambers and furnished them with doors. There was great joy among the people now that the disgrace of the Gentiles was removed. Then Judas and his brothers and the entire congregation of Israel decreed that the days of the dedication of the altar should be observed with joy and gladness on the anniversary every day for eight days from the 25th day of the month of Chislev. The word of the Lord. We praise your glorious name, almighty God. Blessed may you be, O Lord, God of Israel, our Father from eternity to our eternity. Yours, O Lord, are grandeur and power, majesty, splendor, and glory. 
for all in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the sovereignty. You are exalted as head over all. Riches and honor are from you. You have dominion over all. In your hands are power and might. It is yours to give grandeur and strength to all. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered the temple area and proceeded to drive out those who were selling things, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And every day he was teaching in the temple area. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people, meanwhile, were seeking to put him to death, but they could find no way to accomplish their purpose, because all the people were hanging on his words. The Gospel of the Lord. In this gospel, Jesus is not attacking the temple itself, but the misuse of the temple, which is supposed to be a house of prayer. And we ourselves are called to be a house of prayer, since St. Paul says that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. But all of this is a challenge in today's world, since we have distractions nearly everywhere we turn. And even if we physically go to the church, the things of the world can fill our minds and turn our attention away from the Lord. But today's gospel shows how important it is to protect and create the right circumstances in order for our interior lives to be focused and deeply centered on Jesus without distractions. In Romano Guardini's book on the virtues, he has a chapter on recollection. In this chapter, he says that man, and especially in our time, always wants to go to others to speak, to hear, and to participate. He constantly wants to see something and wants something to be happening. This desire has become a mania And if it is not fulfilled, he becomes restless, and something drives him out. He who has realized what a valuable thing it is to be recollected must overcome this tendency, or let us speak more modestly, must strive to overcome it more and more. It is really a mania, and overcoming a mania is difficult because the urge has affected the nerves. It takes a long time for it to cease, but it can be reduced to a proper measure. But at the same time, something positive must be done. We must become established in the interior world, must be ourselves and be be interiorly independent. This can be attained only by constantly examining ourselves. How was it today? Did I possess my soul? Or was I in a constant state of agitation? Is my life such that I cannot attain self-possession? What must be changed? And we must do this seriously, not with that dishonest resignation which gives up because it really does not want things to be different. Then, Then and above all, we must seek the face of God, must realize what is the basic truth of our existence, 
God is the eternally existent one. He is here. He is the one who is. This he and I, I before him, I through him, this hearkening of his word, the seeking and speaking, thou God, this is what makes us interiorly alive and firm. And so at this Mass, may we be firmly established in the interior world, in our constant dialogue with the Lord, allowing any moments of silence in this liturgy to lead us to deeper recollection, and so become a house of prayer pleasing to the Lord. Let us pray. For the Pope, bishops, and all leaders of the church, may God continue to bless and uphold them as they share the good news of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For national and local leaders, may God grant them wisdom in pursuit of justice and peace, especially in places of war and conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and those in chronic pain, may God provide healing and loving care. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community of worship, may God's Spirit help us bear great fruit as we welcome the stranger and care for the neglected. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they find serenity and rest with the saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for Cicinio and Lenny Valachian, the intention of this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, we entrust our prayers to you in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what Your Son commanded us to do in memory of Him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, burst into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls.